All right, last tutorial of the day. You can see it's very similar to the last tutorial on, on irregular plans. Um, I really just flip the plan around and I'm going to look at it in a different way. So instead of looking at it um, with the cut line, um, looking in this direction with the stair out ahead, we're actually going to just turn the section around and look at it in a different way. And so I'm going to draw that section line in here. I'm going to break it, as I said uh, before, so that it doesn't become confused with the architecture. I'm going to add my architectural ticks so that you know which direction the section is looking. And then, uh, obviously, the first thing that I'm going to do is draw that ground line parallel with the section cut line, which should be parallel with the primary or secondary axis uh, of my plan. I've drawn this at 1 to 50, as you can see there. Okay, so I also have um, all of the elevation lines for my stair treads, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, um, off of the ground uh, to my first floor. Uh, my sill is one meter above the first floor. My header is one meter, uh, 1.5 meters above the sill or 2.5 meters above the floor. Um, my ceiling is 0.5 meters above that and my roof package is 0.5 meters above the ceiling. Uh, floor to ceiling height, three meters. Okay. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is think about myself as a little camera riding back and forth on this section cut line and I'm looking up to see what I see. I am going to find that moment of intersection where I hit the section, or the perimeter of the plan rather, and I'm going to draw myself a dashed line up. You should draw yourself a continuous but very, very light construction line. I'm going to call this my section box. And I know that my section will occur inside of that box. Now it's interesting, I've got drawing down here we can see that's outside that box. I actually have elements in my view. If I'm out here in a camera, I'm looking straight up, I can see the edge of that, that plan, I can see the edge of that plan, I can see that corner, I can see that corner, but I'm outside of the section, which means I'm outside uh, on the planet Earth. And so that will all be drawn in elevation. Okay, so you can see my section box. Uh, elevation will be drawn outside of that. Elevation will be drawn outside of that. Because I have diagrammed where that section is going to be cut based on where that section line first intersects the perimeter of the plan, I know exactly where my section is going to reside and I know what elements are going to be drawn in elevation. This is no more complex than the plans that you have. Although yours are different, they work in exactly the same way. Now again, I've got this stair back here, and you might want to draw it because you think it's an important part of this section, but I'm not looking in that direction. So I could just discount for right now everything that is behind me, uh, behind that section line. So I am going to just remove that from my consciousness. I'm not going to worry about it. And I am only going to be concerned with what I can see uh, in front of me from that section line. So I am going to start with just my section. I'll come back to that elevation in a minute. Okay. Now I see obviously this becomes a section edge. I'm cutting through the jam. I'm going to cut through or the sill. I'm going to cut through the sill on the other side as well. That becomes a regulating line for my section. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side for clarity. Again, we have that same condition with the frame. The interesting thing about this is part of my frame is inside of the section and a part of my frame is on the outside of the section. That's the jam. So one corner of my jam is inside, another corner is outside. It will work in exactly the same way um, and I will clarify that when I do the overlay. All right. So I move along here and the next thing I see is this opening which I know is a window because it has the double line uh, and so I know that's a ledge that's above the first floor and there's a sill and there's a header and I will clarify that when I do the overlay. 
Okay, now I am, I'm basically done with this section with the exception of this frame um, and these elevations which I will show you after I show you the section cut. So let's just concern ourselves with the section cut for right now. Again, I'm going to come in, I'm going to find that perimeter that I'm cutting through, I'm going to come up to my sill, I'm going to come over, I'm going to come down to my floor, I'm going to come across, I'm going to go up to my sill, come across, come down to the ground, and I'm out. Right? Pretty simple. I know I have headers over those windows, and there's a ceiling and a roof, so I'm going to come down, find my ceiling, come down to that header, come up to my roof, go over, and I'm out. Okay? So, I am going to clarify where that window is with the overlay. I am going to, however, um, show you the regulating lines now for the frames of the windows and these corners. So I'll just pull that corner up and we're going to talk about that when we clarify. Okay. And this frame here and that frame of the jam there. Same on the other side. Okay, for all intents and purposes, that section is drawn. I just have to clarify it. All right, so find my ground line. I come up to my sill, I come down to my floor, I go across to my other wall, I come up to my sill, I go across and come down to the ground and I'm out. I'm going to do the same thing here, I'm going to come down to my header, I'm going to go up to my ceiling, I'm going to come across to my other wall, I'm going to come down to my header, I'm going to go up to my roof, I'm going to go across and I'm done. Okay? But to clarify some of the other elements that are in elevation, I see this window inside in elevation and it has a sill height. I don't see these lines coming all the way to the ground floor line because it's not a doorway, it's an aperture. And so I just see that sill and that header and that set of jams as a box. It just floats right there, okay? I don't extend these lines up to the ceiling and I don't extend these lines uh, down to the ground. There's no corner there. It is a, a window, just like you'd see a window in your wall at, the, at your house. Uh, the wall is continuous around it, and the window floats inside of that wall, okay? Now I'm going to show you how this corner works. I do not show the roof, and I do not show the floor line behind it. I'm looking at the edge of the building, and it extends from the roof, and it turns at that corner, and it comes down all the way to the ground, okay? And it's going to do the same thing on the other side, and that's because I am looking at the face of that building in elevation. Okay, we'll look at that in a second when I pull it away from the drawing below it. And now I'm gonna find the frame lines and they, they just work from the sill to the header, sill to header, and then I have to close them. Okay, and the same is true on the other side. Sill to the header, sill to the header, and I close them, of course with a lighter line. Okay, and that's my section taken from an irregularly shaped plan, which is just a trapezoid, with things outside of the section box that are drawn beyond in elevation. You can see this roof line just extends with a lighter line, and then it turns that corner, and it comes all the way down to the ground. You do not see the floor extend into that. You don't see the floor extend into that. Okay? I do not see this roof line extend into that. I don't see through it. I'm looking at the face or the facade of the building. Okay. If we look at the jam uh, of the frame of that window, it seems to have slipped out from the jam itself, and that is because those walls are at an angle. So if we think about that wall being at an angle, we can kind of start to see now that frame is kind of turned, that frame is kind of turned, and we're seeing those walls recede at an angle. I hope that makes sense.